All right, everybody, this is Niklas Hoschenweht and I'm going to show you my game against Vladimir Onishuk from the fourth round of the Corsican Circuit Tournament. So I put a view like this so you can better see the board and not so much see me during the game. So I won't bow down the whole time. And we can begin. I was playing with the white pieces. Maybe a few words about my opponent. He's rated 26-23, strong grandmaster from the Ukraine. And at this moment, we both had full points in the tournament. We both had three out of three, and we met on board one. So I started with e4, and he went for the Karakan. And I played the advanced variation, e5, while it claims some space. Knight of three, e6, bishop e2. And here really it divides in two systems. Either black immediately plays c5, which he did, or he prepares it first, develops his pieces. So he played c5, I went bishop e3. And now queen b6, this is a very sharp line, probably the sharpest line there is in this whole system. And now I went knight c3. And usually here, most people play knight c6. But he went queen takes b2. And this line is considered to be dubious for black, and I had prepared against it. I had seen he had played it before, so I prepared against it specifically. I played queen b1. Now he played queen b4. If he takes on c3, then I play bishop d2, and I take on b7, and I get this rook on a8. So you cannot do that. So he played queen b4, now a3. And the queen moves back to a5. Now I cannot take on b7 because he takes on c3 and takes on a1. So I need to do it differently. I took on c5. He still can take. It's the same story once again. Bishop d2 and taking on b7. So he played a6. Stopping any bishop b5 stuff. I castled. So this was still my preparation. And he had actually played this in the game before. Queen c7. Now he needs to protect the pawn. And now knight d4. Still my preparation. Now I attack this bishop. He cannot let me take it. So he moves it back. Bishop g6. Queen b4. And now he played knight d7. The point is, so this was still preparation. If he takes on c5, I can take on e6. This is quite strong. Attacking his queen. If he takes back, I get his bishop and he has problems on the dark squares. So instead, he played knight d7, attacking his pawn once again, and I protect it once again with knight a4. Now he played knight e7, this is very logical, uh, developing the knight. If he takes with the queen on e5, I can take on b7. If he takes with the knight on e5, I can play bishop f4, and this pin is very annoying for black. So he played knight e7, and I still had looked at this, so I was very happy uh, to get my preparation perfectly on the board. I played knight b6, he took. If he plays uh, rook d8, I have a nice move here, bishop b5. And black cannot take because of knight takes b5, threatening the queen, as well as threatening to go to d6. So this is very strong. So he pretty much needs to take on b6, attack with the c pawn. I repair my structure. Before I had double pawns on the c file, but now I don't. And this pawn can be quite unpleasant for. Um, black maneuverations as if I get this pawn, this pawn b6 will be a strong pass pawn and sometimes there are also sacrifices. Play queen d7 and I immediately played queen b2. Still had prepared this, the queen is going out of this um, diagonal and kind of defending the pawn on e5 and also keeping an eye on the knight on d4. And this position is quite good for white. He played rook c8. This was a move I had not looked at. I think I briefly checked knight c6 when white goes c4 and uh, black is behind in development and has problems. So rook c8, very logical move. And here I also want to prepare c4 somehow. Immediately it doesn't quite work, black could just take. So here as black is, in be is behind in development, I want to open the position as quickly as possible. I played a natural move, rook fd1, which maybe is not best. 
Looks very natural, but I missed his reply. Maybe better rook a c1. And then just playing c4 next move. And black is clearly worse here. For example, knight c6. Let's say I trade the knights. He has to take with the queen. If he takes with the rook, I can take on a6. This is what I was talking about. Um, there are always like ideas like this with this pawn on b6. Like cannot take because then white pushes the pawn. And if after queen takes e6, now c4, white is opening a position and black is in trouble. So rook a c1 might have been stronger. That is here. Because here I thought, okay, I'm going to play c4 next move. What are you going to do? Well, he found this move, which is nice. He's going out of the threats on the d file. And I had not seen this move coming. Still, I'm still doing good here. Uh, I have different moves available. Queen b4 is fine. I could have also played rook dc1 or rook ac1. I was thinking about rook ac1, but somehow I didn't like something. I didn't like that my pawn on a3 is under attack. Uh, but actually, this works out. I can still go c4, and if black takes on a3, I can play queen a2, pinning the bishop. And uh, one line is uh, queen b4, and now I can play rook a1, forcing bishop b2, and then pin the bishop, and I will get uh, two bishops for the rook, and I'm doing, doing okay there, I'm doing quite well. Not quite sure what I didn't like in the end, but I decided to play queen b4. Queen b4. Now, black doesn't want to take this queen, as it would open up the a-file, I can push b5 and the, the queen side kind of collapses for black. So he went back. Bishop takes c2 also doesn't work that well because of rook dc1 and um, black is in trouble. So he went back to d7. And now I could repeat moves, but obviously that was not what I wanted. With this good opening preparation, I still knew my position should be good. And now I play queen d2. And I had a very evil plan in mind, but unfortunately it didn't occur on the board. Um, I have other moves available. Queen b3 could be a good move to, to prepare c4. I still I need to get, get out of this. Bishop is here, sorry. Uh, I need to get out of this threat again. Knight going somewhere, knight f5, attacking the queen is a threat, so I need to get out of there. So I could play queen b2 and then after queen a4 something else, or queen b3 also was a good move. Queen d2 is interesting, but um, maybe not as strong. Now you played h6. So what was my devious plan? If he goes queen a4, now I want to push c4. But the question was what to do here, and here I found this very nice move and I'm sad I couldn't play it but at least I can show you guys right knight b5 what a move I was very proud to find this move the point is that while well, it's threatening checkmate and after queen takes b5 I can go bishop takes c4 when black cannot take the bishop queen takes loses to queen d7 mate and rook takes loses to queen d8 mate so he has to move to queen but now I simply play rook c1, threaten to move my bishop, and black cannot keep everything together. I'm attacking him, he's with the king in the center, it's game over. So in fact, after, after knight b5, I was calculating, well, black cannot take this knight, so only other moves knight d5, but now I have knight c7 check. And now after knight c7, d takes c7, I threaten queen d8, so he has to go bishop e7. But now I can just defend my pawn on c7 and I will regain this pawn and keep my pawn here and white is in a very good place. But unfortunately, he did not go for queen b4. Even though that was clearly the move I was expecting, but the problem is with my queen on d2, the c4 threat is not as strong anymore because um, because the black queen is not attacked if this knight moves, right? So you just played h6, 
And now I played a move which was not necessary, maybe. I thought, okay, you play h6, I play a4, I stop you from going queen a4. But I should just should, should just carry on with rook ac1 and then push c4. I need to open the position, that's for sure. All right, a4, now he went bishop e4. And um, now I went finally rook c1. I could also maybe just play a5 and I have, I have a stable advantage here. But I thought, I wasn't so sure, I thought I also have some weaknesses. So I thought, okay, I, I still need to open this up. Played rook a c1. And now he played. Mm -hmm. What did he play? I think he went g5, but I need to check on my phone. It's been a few days and actually I need I need my phone for later on anyway, because it will get to a, a situation, let's say, where I don't quite re remember the moves. Um, ah yeah, he went g5, yeah, g5. Good move, finally developing his bishop. And here I went f3, but I could have gone c4 immediately, that would have been stronger. And what I was afraid of was that he takes and now puts a bishop on d5 and I thought he just blocks me on d5 and I can't do anything. But here knight b3 is very strong with the idea of going to c5 and the bishop is pinned, he cannot take on c4. So this was uh, very good for white. I thought, okay, let's push the bishop away, f3. And then play um, play c4 next move, and that's what I did. So now you went bishop g7, but now I have to defend my pawn on e5. So I went f4, and now he comes back to e4. And here I played knight f3, and uh, knight f3 I wasn't happy with in the game. Maybe I should just... This pawn is, is hanging because of the queen, so maybe I should just defend and play a5. But, hmm. We were also getting a little bit low on time, and it was a special situation in the tournament. There was no extra time after move 40, which is usually the case. So, uh, as soon as you go down to a few minutes, you only live off the increment, the half a minute a move. So, okay, I decided I went knight f3, but now he just took the pawn pretty much. He took an f4 and he took an a4 and I was like, okay, maybe I should not have just given him this pawn and now black has equalized and uh, I have to prove where's my compensation. So I said, okay, I need to open the position. Took on d5, he took back of the bishop and now I took on c8 and I played rook c1. And he was getting low on time, like 5-6 minutes, and also didn't have much more. I was like, okay, he will spend some time here to, to see if he can really take this pawn as well. But he did, <laughs> and he did so pretty fast. Um, the pawn was, if he goes knight 7 I can bring my rook to c7, and uh, the rook is a little bit uncomfortable for him. But he took the pawn. Now it was two pawns, and I was like, oh no, this is going bad. But okay, I had something in mind here. Obviously, I just didn't give the pawn like that, and I played bishop e3. Um, attacking the knight, but what I had missed now was um, okay. You cannot go knight c4, I think, because I can take. And now queen d6 looks strong. Queen b8, bishop c5. This looks very strong. And I thought if he goes to d7, then I have rook c8 check. King e7 now very nice move. Bishop g5 check. And uh, black's in trouble. Takes queen takes. F6, just take here is made, and if something else moves in between, um, bishop f6, or bishop f6, I take, I take here, and knight f6, uh, I can go rook c7, even I thought, yeah, rook c7, and, and black is crushed. So that doesn't work, 
but he found a move that I didn't see coming, which was putting the knight back to a8. Ugly move maybe, but there are also the upsides. Defending c7 and rook c8 check doesn't give me much, just moves the king, the rook is protected. So I thought, okay, I need to do something else, and I play bishop c5. Good move, improving my bishop, bringing him to d6, and stopping him from castling as well. Now maybe he should challenge my bishop right away, but he decided to go rook g8. I said, okay, I'll play bishop d6. And now he went, he went king d7. And I thought, okay, maybe he wants to trade rooks. And I played queen c3 to prevent this, but I could actually ignore it and play knight d4, and actually I'm better again here, because my pieces are so well uh, coordinated, and black's pieces are kind of spread out. His only good piece is the bishop on d5, and his king is much weaker than my king. And if rook c8, I can just go rook f1, and I have an unpleasant initiative here. But I played queen c3. Now he went queen c6. Okay, I cannot trade queens being two pawns down, so I play queen e3. I cannot go here because he could take on d6, and this pin decides the game. So I go to c e3, and he played queen b6. And now I made a mistake. I should go bishop c5, not allowing the queen trade, and I still have very good play against this king. White is better here. I played rook c7 check. For some reason I thought he needs to take off the queen on c7, but he doesn't. Of course he can take off the knight because his queen would be hanging, but he can just go to d8. And now, because my queen is pinned, I'm more or less forced to trade it. Of course I could play rook c5, but I thought being all these pins can't be any good. And uh, indeed black is better here. Still, that would have been a better option than going into the endgame. Because here, even though I regain a pawn, I'm still a pawn down and um, black's defending everything. And now we're both, we're both very low on time and like I said, we didn't get any time additionally, so we just had to live off more or less our increment. I played g3 to stop any threats against g2 and here, fortunately for me, he made a mistake. He played king e8, probably thinking he can repeat moves once to get more time and then play something else. But instead he should have gone bishop f8 right away when I would have been in trouble. Best move is something like knight d2. I want to go knight d4, not realizing that I'm almost lost or pretty much lost here after e5. Yeah, this is just lost. Rook f5, now knight and rook are attacked. Rook f5, bishop e4, and uh, bishop e4 is still knight e6. But I'm sure black can do something else here and I'm in a terrible situation. So fortunately for me, he wanted to gain some time, played king e8, rook e7, king d8, now I could repeat, but I thought maybe I have something better, and then I said, okay, knight d4, this looks actually good, and this is the best move. Now you play bishop e5, e5, and here I can just take on e6, I took on d7, but I can just take on e6, and for some reason I thought he can go to c8, but um, now, in fact, it's just losing. You can take here, play knight f4, attacking both pieces, and they win a piece. So that doesn't work for him. Um, he, needs to, he needs to take on e6, but then I take back. And um, he needs to go rook e8, but in this endgame, I have very good drawing chances with the bishop pair. Uh, probably I can, I can hold this. But I thought the other position is also not so clear and indeed it is very, very difficult to assess and play, especially with no time on the clock pretty much. So let's see what happened. Uh, bishop e5, bishop d6. Alright, so I took on d7. I'm getting two pieces for the rook. But he has these two pass pawns, right? My king is also far away from them, so this is kind of a problem. But I have a potential pass pawn here as well. Now he played b5. I said, okay, it's, it's time to bring my king closer, king f2. And he cannot advance right now, because if he pushes this one, this is hanging. If he pushes this one, this is hanging. So he played rook a8. So you can push b4. I said, okay, I need to stop this. I played knight c2. And he went rook c8. And here I made a mistake. I went back to d4. I should go to b4 probably, even though still position remains difficult for white. But I went to d4, and now he trades the bishops. That's a good move. 
because that was really stopping him from advancing the pawns. And I took and I played g4. I, I thought, okay, I need to get counterplay because otherwise in the long run, I'm, I'm just going to lose against those two, two pawns. But honestly, now the position is lost. He played rook c5, he could also just push. That would be maybe simpler even, but he played rook c5. Played knight f3. And now he started pushing b4. Okay, I need to see exactly how it went down now. Um, yes, king e3 I played now. Because otherwise if I push, I thought somehow, I thought I need to get my king closer. <laughs> okay, I didn't really think much. We, you know, we, we were on seconds here. We, were, we didn't have much time. So he, he continued to push and I thought, okay, I need to push as well. What can I do? Push, push. Of course, I also calculated a little bit here. <laughs> push. Okay, now it gets interesting. G5. And it's crazy, it's like study-like that I'm still, I mean, I'm still having a chance here. One important point is if he takes on e5, I always take back with check. And then I'll be in time to promote my own pawn. But he had a win here. He had a win. And it went, goes like this, a2. But we both didn't see it. Well, obviously he didn't see it, otherwise he would have played it. And the pawn is rook c3 check, blocking the bishop. But it gets, it gets even better. After takes, takes. It looks like both are queening and then white might be even winning, yeah? But black plays c2 now. And the pawn is that now after queen, black queens with check. And next move gets another queen and I can resign because I don't have a perpetual and, well, playing against two queens is not so much fun. So that was the way to win it. But not easy to see and fortunately for me he missed it. And he played b3 instead. No, excuse me. He took on g5. Took on g5, played h6. And now he made the final mistake. Uh, the crucial mistake. He played b3 now. He still needs to do this. Um, but now... We would both just queen and uh, that would be equal because I I don't have any pawns and queen and knight against queen is not enough to win. So that was his chance, but with the seconds ticking down, he, he missed it and he played b3, but now I go h7, rook c8, and uh, I went knight d2, he went b2, and now I queened. And what's interesting here is that my bishop and knight are just stopping the pawns. If he goes a2, I take on b2 covering a1, and b1 I just take. Right? But he still has these two pawns as well. So the question is, can I win this? Because bishop and knight against the king is winning. So he went king c6, and I went king e4, just to stop him from going king d5. And he also is in a kind of Zugzwang. If he, for example, goes g4 now, I think I can just play king f4, king d5, and I don't take on g4 immediately because of e5, that would be a problem. Now he's threatening a2, that I'm not in time, but I can move the bishop back to c3 and just take on g4 the next move. And this is game over, e5 doesn't help because I take on g4. I don't take on e5 because then g3 might be quite unpleasant. But I take on g4 and after e4 just come back. And notice how the knight and the bishop are just stopping the king from getting closer. So instead he played... He played king d6. And now I brought my bishop back. And he can he cannot really do much. He, he just has to wait. So he played now king c6, but now I play king f3 and go after this pawn. King d5, king g4, and he realized there's not really much he can do because if he pushes, I just take, I just come back and I'll pick up this pawn eventually because of Zugzwang and then I'll pick up these. It's just a matter of time. 
So you thought, okay, well, let me at least try something here. And um, in this position, he played b1 queen. Now the blockade is broken, but he lost one of his pawns. So these two pieces can now deal with the a pawn. King c4, now I need to move my bishop, of course. Bishop f6, a2, knight e2, check. Oh no, excuse me. He, okay, a2, he can play this. But um, yeah, I can just go knight e2 check, king d3, well, knight f3, for example. Should be sufficient, yeah. He played knight king b3 first, but I saw, okay, I can just take on g5, and after a2, I can go knight e2 check, king c2, and now knight c4 is a crucial move. Because after king b1, I can go knight a3 check, and now he cannot help his pawn anymore. The knight and bishop are just controlling the squares. And if he goes to d3, I can go, or if he goes to b3, excuse me, I can go knight e3. And once again, he cannot get to b1. So he played king d3, but now I went knight a3, also stopping the king. He went king e4, of course, last try to push e5, but I just bring my bishop back. And now it's clear he will lose the pawns and will play bishop and knight against the king. So he played e5, I went king g4, king d3, bishop takes e5, and he just gave me the pawns. Okay, let's queen again. And we have this position and I had to convert. And we'll go over this pretty quickly. You can also check out my video on how to check with knight and bishop. I'll put it in the description. And it's really just a few things to know. So we'll go over this very quickly and see how this game continued. So bishop takes a1, king e4. Now I just waited, bishop b2, because he has to um, worsen his king position. King e3, king f5. I tried, the first step is to push the king to the edge. So king e3, king f5, king f3, now I bring my knight closer, knight c4, king g3, bishop c1, bishop c1, king f3, bishop h6, and I have 50 moves to win this, so I wasn't really worried that uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't make it in time. 50 moves is a good amount of time. King g3, and knight e5, taking more squares away from the king. King g2, king e4. I mean, the only task was to get the king somehow to the edge, but eventually I managed king g2, king e3. Okay, now at this point, I knew, okay, <laughs> now it will be easy once I have him on f1. Because now I can do this famous... I went to h1 actually, excuse me. Uh, I can do the famous w maneuver, which we'll see now. So this is really the starting point of the w maneuver and why is it called like that? Because the knight is going in this route to win and this is the w. So, now I play bishop h2 and do not allow him to go to g1. And the whole point of this maneuver is to get the king into the right corner, the same color of my bishop. So in this case it's a1 or h8. But okay, I didn't want to get him all the way over here. So let's go with a1. So bishop h2, king e1, knight e4. And there's just one critical moment here. If he goes king f1 back now, I'll just check and we'll continue like this, 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 and so on and so forth until it's checked. There's just one critical moment which is here. He can try to run and that's what he did. And I guess that's the only thing he wanted to, to try and see if I know this specific position. Here I continue with W maneuver and it looks like the king is getting out. It looks like it, right? King is about to escape here, but now I play bishop d6 and the king stays in its cage. King c2, okay, here he resigned, but it would continue like this. Now I 
make the cage even smaller and the king is back here and check and we see I just continue with the W maneuver check and now we have him in the corner now we make a waiting move and then there we have it and that's the checkmate and that's the technique but once again if you want to see some more of this you can check out the video on how to checkmate with knight and bishop so that was probably one of my most exciting games i've ever played especially due to the fact that there was no more time after a move 40 and we're playing on uh, a few minutes for about 60 moves or so and especially the end i thought, thought was fascinating because it was study like i was playing against four pawns with only knight and bishop but the knight and bishop could just control everything keep everything um, where it was and one after, the, one after the other, all the pawns dropped. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the game and um, see you next time. Bye bye.